In Lent week one, we explored the Lenten practice of saying no. It is easier to say no to something when you've already said yes to something else. As those who follow Jesus, each of us constantly gets to choose no or yes. Will I do this or will I do that? How will I use the time and resources I've been given? That's a stewardship question. In Lent week two, we looked into being a blessing. We have been blessed in order to be a blessing to others. We look deeper into these stewardship questions. As people of faith, it's up to each of us to decide how are we going to use everything God has given us? Last week, as we thought about the stewardship of our time, we explored the Lenten practice of worship that is regular and often. This week, hopefully, each of us will be intentional about preparing for this invitation to generosity. So here we are, face to face with one of the most popular and well-known pieces of the Bible there is. I wonder how many of us hearing the words are taken back to the funeral for a loved one. The Lord is my shepherd. It's a phrase that I expect even the majority of non-church people would recognize. These words are heard as words of comfort, support, and encouragement. Traditionally, we know them as, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Those are the words of Psalm 23. But before you jump to all the great and amazing things that God does for you and gives you, rest in green pastures near a clean water source, spiritual restoration, leadership, protection, comfort and reassurance, all you can eat and drink, that's the ultimate all-inclusive, goodness and mercy forever, forever in God's presence. Before you jump to all that, just pause a minute at the very first line. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Wouldn't that be great? I shall not want. Can you imagine not being in a state of want? For our day and age, it might be the most revolutionary idea in the entire Bible, since everything we see and hear and experience demands over and over that we consume, buy, accumulate, hoard, succeed, and want. You know, faster, stronger, smarter, more, more, more. Yet this Bible song starts with the subversive idea that I shall not want, not because I can't afford it, not because I have three of them, not because I already have the best and the newest, not because it's back ordered on Amazon, I shall not want because the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want because God provides me with everything I need. I shall not want because I trust in God, who came in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new. Jesus clearly taught and lived that we are interconnected and interrelated, neighbors to one another, to love and serve each other sharing what we have and who we are for each other's good. I shall not want, because to want is the path to greed and selfishness, which is not Jesus' way. To want means never being happy, 
never being content, always, well, wanting, and always at someone else's expense. So what's the best way to help God steer you into those lovely green pastures of I shall not want? Let me suggest that appreciating what you have is a great way to counteract greed and want, and to grow contentment and happiness in their place. So, for our Lenten practice this week, here's what we're going to work on, appreciation and contentment. This week, in order to help you experience and increase your sense of contentment, I want you to do an appreciation inventory. Look, touch, smell, remember, and immerse yourself in what you have been given. You may choose to physically walk through your home to do this, or you can do it sitting in your favorite spot and using your mind's eye. Either way, as you encounter or experience your physical stuff, clothes, car, food, money, toys, and so on, your non-physical stuff, your job, your memory, learning, faith, and your relationships, family, friends, co-workers, people that support you. Pause with each one and appreciate what you have. Afterwards, acknowledge to yourself just how much you have been given. Be content, be grateful. In these, you will, will you find the path to generosity. Then come back next week ready to share a brief story of how this Lenten practice worked for you and how it helped or how it didn't, how it helped to open you up to God as you made space in your life to actively live out the way of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>